Okay, the four inner court chambers, which we have uh, attempted to display here. And so let's uh, show you and orient ourselves as to what it is we're looking at. Uh, first off, we have doors, which are going to represent the cardinal positions and the gates. So this blue door here, this is the east gate, okay? So first off, let's position ourselves in uh, our arrangement here and uh, take our props and position ourselves to the east. So this is east. This is the east gate. Uh, this door over here, this is the north gate. And this door over here is the south gate. Okay, once we are uh, oriented, then we can begin to position ourselves as to what it is we're looking at. Okay, the obvious thing is we have in the middle the altar. Okay, so the altar is in a, a center position. And then around it are the four chambers. So uh, what we've done, we tried to express chambers by different ways. These in Ezekiel are described as the singer's chambers. Um, but we're going to suggest that one is for the singers, and that's where we have a microphone, and one has the instruments, the trumpets, the Psalm 150 instruments, the uh, kithara. Okay, and so these are positioned um, towards the east, which we'll see. And then we have... Um, at the north gate there, we have a chamber next to it, and that is for the keepers of the house. So keepers of the house, what we're displaying is things that if there is a menorah there, they would have the oil, they would have the incense, okay? We also have a sickle. So what the sickle is, is the sickle is in the north gate, and that is for the sacrifices. Then we have the keepers of the altar. So here we have the keepers of the altar, and you know, keepers of the coals and administration, of the altar. So these are the four chambers that are in the inner court, okay? And uh, we're uh, just setting up these props to kind of um, display for you what their uh, purpose is, what their function is, and uh, where they're oriented in the inner court area. So again, if we were to zoom in and we'll take a look, we have in the center, we have the altar, okay? The gate to our left, the door to our left, that's the north gate. The blue gate uh, straight in front of us, that's the east gate. And over here, this is the south gate. So these are the, the gates around the inner court area. And then we have the symphonia. So we believe that this chamber serves a purpose of the Psalm 150 instruments. And over here, we have the chorus. And we have a microphone to represent the uh, singers. So it's like a choir room. Uh, practice room, storage room, whatever you want to call it. Of course, we have our altar. And then towards the north, we have uh, oil, potentially for the menorah. We don't know for sure if there's a menorah or not. And then we have some incense. We have some dried sap incense and then oil incense. Now, we also have here a sickle. And we'll explain the uh, purpose of the sickle in a little bit. But all of this is actually tremendously important for us in understanding prophecy. Okay, and of course, our last one is our chamber for the administers of the altar. So um, at the, our vantage point now, we're in the temple. Okay, so in this courtyard area around the altar, um, to the west of it, where we are standing, that would be the temple. Okay, so... Um, the keepers of the temple, they have a chamber, they have a place to serve. The priests serve, and they're serving in the temple here. Uh, this chamber here is for the service of the altar, of course, in the center. And then there is worship in this uh, area with singing um, the, the uh, instruments, because we know that the uh, singers, that blew, and those that blew the trumpet, the 120, they're around the east end of the altar. So they're there and they would have the trumpets in the chamber. Okay, we will get into the uh, profound significance and importance of what we're looking at with the four chambers of the inner court, but let's go to Ezekiel chapter 40, and let's read what Ezekiel says about the chambers and the court around the altar. So we're in chapter 40, and we're here at verse 43, and the previous verses here were talking about the details of the north gate. Remember, in our view before, the north gate was towards our left. They were the, like, aluminum 
uh, kind of doors we were trying to represent them by. Okay, and it says um, within the north gate, it says within were hooks. Okay, now this is important because the orientation here of the north gate, this represents the hooks, okay, and the north gate and uh, the sickle. Uh, we believe that's a, a sickle uh, weapon in uh, Ezekiel chapter 9 as well. It was a revelation that it is a sickle in the hand of the, uh, the angels and they're administers to the house, okay? So uh, next to the chamber for the temple is the north gate, at, at which point we would have hooks. So this is a profound significance and prophecy because it does relate to Revelation, which we'll see, and also Ezekiel 9. So we have the hooks, we have the sickles. Um, fastened round about upon the tables was the flesh of the offering. Now, some people think that the uh, various um, offerings that are taking place in um, the Millennial Temple are symbolic in nature. They are not actual uh, sacrifices. But Ezekiel was taken to the temple. He is seeing it, and he is seeing not only just a kind of uh, spiritual rendering in 3D, he is seeing on, on the tables flesh of the offering. So these are literal offerings, okay? Uh, over by the tables, that's by the north gate. Okay, now, verse 44, we continue with the chambers, or we begin with the chambers, really. And without the inner gate, all right, um, were the chambers of the singers in the inner court. Okay, so uh, essentially next to the north gate in the inner court, all right, which was at the side of the north gate. Okay, so it's at the side of the north gate, and its prospect, and prospect in, in Hebrew is face, or its position, pananeum, all right, its position is towards uh, the south, okay? So basically it is, it is facing south, uh, but is by the north gate, okay? And one at the side of the east gate. So the, this was one chamber for the singers, and then there's another chamber for the singers, and one at the side of the east gate, and this one whose prospect or is facing is towards the north. So there, this is a clear indication that there are actually two chambers here, um, one next to the north gate, one next to the east gate, and uh, this one is facing towards the north. And he said it to me, uh, this chamber, all right, and if we look here, uh, we see that this, oops, sorry about that, this chamber, whose prospect is towards the south, is for the priests, the keepers of the charge of the house or the temple, all right? So uh, uh, this, our view is that there's another chamber, and this one is facing south, and this is for the priests that are keeping the responsibilities and tasks of the service of the temple. And the chamber which, uh, whose prospect or face is towards the north is for the priests, the keepers of the charge of the altar. Okay, so we have uh, essentially the two chambers of the singers. We have the chamber of the administration of the temple. And then we have the chamber and this is for the administration of the altar. And it says, these are the sons of Zadok among the sons of Levi. Okay, so the priesthood order here, sons of Zadok, which come near to Yahweh to minister to him. And so he measured the courts. Okay, so again, we're measuring the altar. We're measuring the temple. We're measuring the altar, measuring those that worship therein. So the administration of the priesthood, very important. Sons of Zadok being mentioned. And he, and he measured the court at 100 cubits long and uh, 100 cubits broad, four square. It's a perfect square. And the altar that was before the house. Okay, so we have a courtyard, 100 cubits square, that's around the altar. 
and then within it, this uh, court here, we have these four chambers. Next, we'd like to refer to the website. And here you can see we're at LelandJones.com. And if you go to blog, and you will see these posts, which if you haven't followed along the blog posts, uh, this is called the Four Angels of the Inner Court. Now, the Four Angels um, are in Revelation, and their administration as priests is according to these four chambers. So what we're suggesting is the reason we measure the temple is to understand prophecy, because, of course, the temple in heaven is open throughout the book of Revelation, and this is the administration of the temple that is displaying itself before the throne. This has profound significance in our understanding of what is taking place and to participate in the heavenly worship. Now, in our graphic here, let's once again orient ourselves and take a look of the activities of the four priest angels. We're not going to go through this whole blog. We're just going to summarize it for you. But here in the graphic, you can see that uh, the gate here, this is the east gate. This is the temple. This is the north gate. And this here is the south gate. So we have the two chambers of the singer, singers. This one is facing north. And this one here, if I can get my pointer, uh, singers is facing south then we have the chamber for the house which is here and then we have the chamber for the altar here so let's take a look at how the an, uh, angelic order uh, is participating in the activities and functions of the four chambers so we see that the angel in revelation 14 had power the angel of the altar had power over the fire so what that means is we have the chamber of the altar, and that uh, angel is has the power of the fire. So that angel participated in uh, lighting the altar uh, that Moses set up, lighting the altar that Solomon had set up. Uh, fire came down from heaven. Okay, so that's that angel. He has the power over the fire and the altar. Uh, then we have. Um, the house over here, we have the angel from the temple. An angel comes out from the temple and says, thrust your sickle. Okay. Uh, and remember, we saw the sickle in the hook in, that was in the north gate. Okay. So we have the building for the temple. Angel came out from the temple. And within the north gate, we had the hook, which is the sickle. So the angel from the temple says... Thrust your sickle. And there's another angel um, from, that comes from the temple. From the temple has a sickle. So this is representing uh, the worship happening in the inner court of the angels. And then we have the angel of the waters. So these are angels in Revelation uh, 14 and Revelation 16. Uh, the angel of the waters, he sings. So what happens is the temple has waters that proceed from it, and that uh, stream of water is passing by one of the chambers, and we believe that the angel is singing uh, a song, because the angel of the water said, uh, True and righteous are your ways, uh, Yahweh El Shaddai, for you have judged thus. Okay, So that's the angel of the waters. Then we have the angel of the seal, this angel with the seal, he, this is going back to Revelation 7, okay, and he comes from the east sun, so the, that's the east gate, all right, he has the seal of the living God, then we have the angel um, in the sun, okay, and he calls the birds to come to the great feast, that is Armageddon, so uh, herein we see, uh, graphically expressed, the order of the book of Revelation four angels uh, administering um, in the inner court in the four chambers. I want to mention uh, briefly, I encourage you to read the whole article, um, but I want to mention the two doors, the east and the north gates. The reason we are displaying uh, things in the uh, reading to the oil and the incense there is 
we believe that the Apostle uh, Paul had two doors open to him, one to the east gate, one to the north gate, okay? And um, this discussion talks about the two gates. And in the north gate, uh, what you could see here, um, the cherub stood by the north gate is where the sacrifices were offered. And this is referred to in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12. Now, thanks be to God, always has chosen us to triumph in Christ and makes manifest the savor of his knowledge in every place, or the incense. For we are unto God a sweet savor in Christ, and them which are saved, and them which perish. So the sweet savor and the incense, we believe that is relating to the door open to uh, Apostle Paul, and that door is connected to the north gate. So that's why we had positioned there um, the articles for the incense. In another blog post, we have the uh, singer's chambers and the 12 musical instruments. So in this one, uh, what we get into is how the 12 instruments, we believe there's 12 instruments, um, main instruments are in Psalm 150, but those instruments as well, the administration of the temple, happen throughout the book of Revelation, and they also happen throughout the uh, book of 1 Corinthians. So 1 Corinthians is talking about temple worship as represented by various instruments, okay? And so uh, this uh, blog post and study essentially gets into those, into the trumpet, into the the kinawar or the harp, or kathara, uh, the uh, uh, symbols, okay? All of these are languages uh, that Apostle Paul is using is coming from Psalm 150, Okay, so we have a uh, more detailed study where we do get into um, the oil and the incense. Okay, so that's what this study is here, uh, relating to the fruits of the Spirit, the oil. All right, and we have another study on the breakdown of the 12 instruments and in the worship. So uh, here we have English, we have Hebrew, we have Greek, and we come to the instruments in the temple worship service. And then we have a, a f further breakdown of um, the notes of this uh, blog post breaking down the 12 instruments uh, here. So uh, further information on this, we've already posted this on the blog, and these two posts are related to uh, the singer's chambers of the inner court and also the four angels. Now, in another blog post, you can see the title, Wedding Supper Shopping List. Now, that might sound like a silly statement, but no, this is very serious. Um, essentially, what we're doing is we're taking what we're learning about the inner court and about what we're learning with the four chambers and taking these concepts that we understand and finding parabolic imagery in the book of Revelation and in the parables of the wedding supper. So that's what we're uh, doing in this blog post. We're not going to do the whole thing, but we're going to take the information we've already shared and show you how the four chambers are happening in Christ's parables of the wedding supper. So, for example, the parables of the wedding supper, there, let's, let's just stay with our uh, diagram and go over uh, what we're looking at here. Our screen is kind of cutting it off. Let's get a full, let's get a few of full view. Okay, here we go. In the last uh, video, or two videos ago, we had discussed how the chambers, the north and south chambers, have upper, middle, and lower seats in them, and Christ talked about this in Luke 14. So we know Luke 14 is a major chapter on the wedding supper, so is Matthew 22. But we begin to realize that the theme of the wedding supper it continues in the book of Luke from chapter 14 to 15 to 16. Now, what is that we're getting at? Well, with the parables that um, Luke is recording, we can see a consistent theme of the wedding supper. So, um, you know, he has made all things ready. He said he has slain his oxen. Okay, so here we have some kind of, uh, we have a lamb, we have a goat, and we have an oxen. And these are all actually appearing in the uh, parables. 
So for example, in the uh, parable um, of the son, the uh, one son takes the inheritance and the other son complains and says, oh, you never slayed a fatted calf. Talks about the fatty calf. You never slayed a goat. So he talks about the, the calf, the goat, and the lamb. And these, of course, are part of the wedding supper um, feast. Okay, And then also Luke talks about the oil and the cores or the measures of wheat, how much wheat is uh, available to the wedding supper. So he, sa he says, you have slain the oxen. And so slaying the oxen relates to the altar, okay, and the altar chamber. And then the son, one son comes and he hears the noise from the house. So when he's talking about the house, the house is the temple. And then he hears the sound of the music okay it says music in king james with the word in greek is symphonia where we get the word in english symphony so that's why we're suggesting those are the instruments and he heard the music and the dancing where dancing in greek is chorus okay and we believe that's the chamber titled chorus so we're titling the two chambers singer chambers the chorus chamber and the symphony chamber, or the chorus chamber in the symphonia, we say it in Greek. And then we have the parable of um, Lazarus, and in it, uh, it talks about Abraham's uh, bosom. Well, that word in Greek can also mean creek. So if we take that as Abraham's creek, now we also have the waters coming out of the temple. So that is in Luke uh Chapter 16, I believe, the oil, all right, and the wheat. That is in the unjust steward parable. Uh, when he's asked, how much do you owe the master? He says, so many core of wheat, all right? He says, so many baths of oil. Well, we found all those precise measurements in Ezra chapter 7. So the much of the blog post, we'll get into those details. But what we want to highlight here is the, um, the details related to the inner court. Okay, So as we explained uh, in the previous video of the wedding supper in the inner court, there are four levels to the building that the uh, priests uh, eat the offerings in. Okay, And so... Um, you know, we get the wedding supper theme clear in Luke 14. Where it's, it's talking about the wedding supper and the gamos in Greek. And we know the wedding supper is in Matthew 22 and Revelation 19. But the themes of which they do continue into Luke chapter uh, 15. Okay, so we had talked about this in the previous video of how the architecture of the temple, the hedges, the lanes of the city, the tower, all of which uh, describing in Matthew 22 and Luke 14, um, are part of the architecture of the inner court. And uh, we had discussed the king's house, which we also call the tower. It's the parable of the um, army, uh, the parable of the lost sheep, the lost coin, all of which is related to the wedding supper. Uh, the royal garments, Okay, so we see the royal garments in Luke 15. All right, and then here we get into the details of the lamb, the beef, the goat, and the hundred baths of olive oil and hundred measures or core of wheat. Okay, showing the precise uh, measurements, precise amounts, precise grocery list, if you were, of the wedding supper, even the salt, okay? Ezra 7 talks about the salt. Uh, it also talks about the salt in Luke uh, chapter 14, verse 34. Salt is no good, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherein shall it be seasoned, okay? So talking about uh, the, the condition of the people, is it, uh, has the salt lost its savor, all right? And then, as we want to explain further, we have the symphony and the chorus. 
And so in Luke 15, verse uh, 25, as you can see what it says, the singer's chambers, um, when the brother came back to the house or temple, he drew nigh to the house. He heard the music and the dancing. Music here is symphonia in the Greek. Uh, means unison of sound, where we get the word symphony. A concert of instruments. So we heard the music and he heard the dancing. Okay, dancing, choros, a ring, a round of dance, a choir, dancing. We believe that the names of the singer's chambers um, in front of the temple will reflect Christ's parables in, in Luke 15, uh, where the inner gate in the chambers of the singers of the inner court. So you haven't watched the video on the wedding supper architecture in the inner court, and you haven't read the blog on the wedding supper shopping list, I definitely encourage you to uh, look at those, okay, if you haven't. It's very, very critical information. So we could see the cores of wheat, okay, 100 measures of wheat, cores of wheat, okay, precisely the same measurement in Luke chapter 16 as in Ezra chapter 7, cores of wheat. We also saw the oil, um, the baths of, of oil. And if you read Ezra, you see that there are baths or large measures of wine. Of course, the wine at the wedding supper. So, um, again, we also see the singer's chambers we're going to call them symphonia and chorus, okay? And the order of the four chambers. So let's take a look once again at our setup here and talk about and discuss as we conclude the order of what we've learned as it relates to the four chambers. Get those on the camera for you to see. All right. And what have we learned? We learned that in the court of the altar, there are four chambers in each of the corners, and they are positioned east, north, and south, and they uh, serve the purpose of administering at the altar, administering at the temple. So we have our oil and our incense and we could see the great door open to the apostle Paul and we could see the sweet savor of the incense there in 2 Corinthians, I think chapter two. We see the two chambers of the singers. So we have a microphone over there related to the singers. We have our uh, kinoir over here related to the symphonia. We have the altar in the center, and we have the east gate. So guys, that's our uh, message on the four chambers, their prophetic significance in the book of Revelation, chapters 14 and 16, their prophetic significance in the parabolic image of the wedding supper. Okay, so come to the wedding supper. Uh, Christ is soon to return. The Son of Man is soon to appear in the clouds in power and great glory. So a voice came from the throne saying, praise our God. Okay, from the singer's chambers, amen. Praise our God, all you his servants that fear his name, both small and great. 